Fox News alert on the mall attack in Kenya. The FBI just told Fox News it cannot confirm yet or deny whether any of the assailants are or were Americans. The FBI does have agents on the ground in Nairobi. They are looking into the possibility that some of the hostage takers may originally be from Minneapolis. The terrorists shot up the mall on Saturday, targeting Westerners and non-Muslims. Then last night, terrorists in Pakistan blew up a Christian church, a troubling series of events for Westerners overseas. Lieutenant Colonel Ralph Peters is a Fox News strategic analyst and author of the book Hell or Richmond. Colonel, good to see you today. Uh, do you see any common threads here? Well, yeah, there certainly are common threads, and that's Al-Qaeda, its franchises, and related terrorist groups, uh, Sunni Muslim fanatics, are determined to exterminate Christians wherever they can find them in the greater Middle East, in the areas beyond the Middle East, such as Kenya, that they feel should belong to Muslims. And while this is not a religious war for us, Shannon, obviously it's not, it is one for our enemies. It's one more asymmetry. For you cannot deny that Al-Qaeda is out to kill Christians, Jews, and by the way, Shia Muslims, and any Sunni Muslims who don't live up to their standards. It's, it's the most, one of the most murderous cults in history, and the Obama administration is still looking for common ground with these guys. Well, and of course, the administration will say these are outliers. These are not, um, you know, in any way, you know, average Muslims who are practicing their faith in a peaceful way. Um, this is an offshoot. These are radical people who operate from a different kind of ideology. Do you think the administration is truly suggesting that with this kind of group, we actually try to negotiate or have any kind of talks? No. No, but they, what the administration does, and to be fair, what the Bush administration before it did, is play to the, the loudest voices here and abroad. And when you pander to religious extremists, you disempower the moderates. You hurt the moderates. And they can't understand that. Now, certainly, uh, the majority of Muslims in the world are not Al-Qaeda members. Sunni uh, Muslims are not. But the numbers are significant. And it's now, Jane's now estimates, I believe, that 40% of the opposition fighters in Syria are Al-Qaeda fanatics or related terrorists and extremists. And so you go back to this mall attack in Kenya. Uh, and, and, and Nairobi is one of the most livable cities in Africa. It's rel relatively modern. Uh, this really was a tragedy, but what is striking and should finally get the attention of somebody on the American left, who apo the apologist for terror, is that these people cold-bloodedly went into a mall. They didn't attack a military target. They didn't attack a government target. They went to a mall on a Saturday afternoon, s sorted out Muslims and Christians, and slaughtered as many Christians as they could. Now, that should tell us something about the kind of people we are dealing with. Now, also, something that people aren't noting, Al-Shabaab, the Somali group behind this attack, has been on the ropes. They needed to pull off a grandstand play, a Hail Mary, and they did. They needed to show that they're still alive, still capable. It doesn't mean that they're terribly strong. It means that they're desperate, and desperate terrorist groups do horrific things. Expect more to come. Well, and there are a lot of uh, experts who say that this is, you know, in, in many ways a recruiting tool, that there are a lot of young men in uh, the Somali region who have no other prospects and that they are in many ways attracted to these groups because these groups can stand up and say, look, we're successful, we're doing something, we have purpose, we have passion. Yeah, well, I, I think it's a combination of things. First of all, it's not hard to get young men to kill. Um, it's especially disenfranchised, uh, powerless young men. You put an AK-47 in their hands, an, an automatic weapon, and let them kill people and tell them God wants them to do it. That is incredibly empowering. It's the greatest power they will ever have in their, their, their pathetic lives. And so, yes, the ideology is appealing, but the sense of adventure, the sense of basically being able to go wild for Allah, is incredibly appealing and it's not just within Islam other religions have been through this before but right now Islam has had some very bad innings in the great game of history and we cannot deny that the greatest violent problem within a religion today is the layered series of civil wars within the various Islamic communities we're really on the periphery we're in a sense bystanders nonetheless we have to act when we are attacked, when the civilized world is attacked. And here's the thing that people just can't get through their heads because it's so ugly. 2,000 years of the history of religion-fired insurgencies show one thing. 
In 2,000 years, Shannon, 2,000 years, there's not one that was put down with negotiations or palliative measures. You kill the fanatics until they're all dead or the survivors fade into the woodwork. It is a long, gory, painful process. Nothing else has ever worked. And the right response for Kenya now and the world community that stands with Kenya is to go back into Somalia and kill as many members of Al-Shabaab as they can as ruthlessly as possible. That is ugly. It's like, I, wish it, I wish the world were a different place. I wish we could all be Quakers. But when you're facing terrorists who go into a shopping mall and slaughter almost 100 people, wound over 200, the only possible response, the only thing that begins to work is to track them down and kill them. We have to deal with the reality that we have. Uh, Colonel Peters, always good to see you. Thank you. Thank you, Shannon.